So a lot of our more recent subscribers would probably know that we've obviously been spending a lot of time working on the LSQ and my queue as well too. So obviously there's been a lot of HQs on the channel as recent, but as a lot of you original guys know who started following the channel from the very, very early days, you'll know that obviously the Fairlane played a big part in our channel. And just recently, the Fairlane has returned. The reason why it's, it's back is we have a bunch of things that we want to do to this, including the manual shift kit, and we also want to stuff a Helltech into this thing. So, she's back. guys that have only started just watching and that haven't gone back and watched our previous videos. This is a 1995 Fairlane gear. It is Bordeaux in color, not burgundy. <laughs> it has got a XR6 limited slip diff in it, which has a spool in it, because I wanted the 345s. It's got a rebuilt motor, rebuilt four liter, which we built on previous episodes for drag challenge. It was always turboed, I turboed it almost two years ago now, I think, or a year and a half ago now. The dirty old four liter that had 250,000 Ks wasn't up to the challenge, and I don't know what happened with that car. I think it was lifting the head and getting pressure into the cooling system, which overheated it a bunch of times, and it was no good. But the idea for this car was six weeks out from drag challenge. Um, the engine blew up, obviously. It didn't blow up, but it was done for. So we decided to rebuild the new engine, cheap and dirty. Not cheap and dirty, but just Oh, just was, to get it going. It was partly cheap and dirty. Just to get it going. You know, there was a lot of things I wanted to do, but just didn't have the time. Anyway, drag weekend was cancelled. So I we ended up just finishing the car in our own time, and I drove it a little bit to get a few Ks on the new motor. And now it's back for some more mods that I wanted to do, but now we have the time. So it is a J-piped spool and boost turbo setup. Everything's been bought through TI Performance. Big shout out and thank you for TI yeah, Performance. Big, big thank you to Jason from TI Performance. But now it's going to be some mods that I've always wanted to do. So Haltech E85, later down the track, I want to put another intake manifold on it, possibly a better turbo and, a, and ditch the J-pipe and go for a um, six boost intake manifold. But at the moment, the J-pipe works fine and the Wuhan wall whistle works perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I, I originally turboed this car just for a dose. <laughs> I never intended it to make actually some power. I just wanted a dose and a little bit more oomph. Yeah. Um, but now we're taking a little bit step further. We're, yeah. we're getting a little bit more confident in our ability to build things. So that's the plan with this. Um, it's got a B&M shifter, Pro Ratchet, yep. which we fit in an episode. You can look at how we did that. This is the interior of the car. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's got Concord leather seats, uh, Concord door trims. Um, the headrests aren't on it because they're getting trimmed because it actually has XR donut headrests. But anyway, the whole reason why we're here today is because we're putting a, we're making this do what it's supposed to do. It's going full manually auto. The whole reason for that is because it, it goes into limp mode, these autos. Over a certain RPM or stall speed, they go into a limp mode and it just jumps into third gear, I think. Don't quote me on it. And for a little while. And this car has actually done it to me. It's only got a small stall converter in it, which you know, will go larger down the future, but it's only got a small stall converter. And launching the car a couple of times, it's jumped into third, hasn't it, Michael? It yeah. started on you and you questioned me it why it did that. It just dies and then it locks up. And yeah, so I called up Shift Kits Australia and they said that the full manual will ditch the limp mode. It cuts it out, so no more limp mode. It'll have full line pressure all the time and it'll be bang, it'll bang gears instantly. So that's what I want because it's more reliable and safer instead of letting it change it itself. And, well, it's going to make use of why we put that in. <laughs> yeah, because everybody asks, why do we bother putting a B&M shifter in when it's just an auto anyway? So now it's actually going to be useful. All the stuff that we just talked about is all stuff that we've done in the previous build series. If you go to our channel, there's a whole playlist dedicated to the Fairlane Street Machine Drag Challenge Weekend build, where you can watch all the footage of us trying to get this thing to Drag Challenge, which inevitably got cancelled, but we still had a crack at it anyway. So if you want to watch any of that, that's where you'll find it all. But for now, we're going to get stuck into this PTR shift to manual conversion thingy, whatever it is. Let's go.
Just kidding, not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> We've got a lot to learn, like... What does all this mean? Like, there's a lot to figure out. What's DPI? What's AVI? <laughs> What's DPI? If anyone can help us out, um, help us out. <laughs> yeah. So, today, we're working on this, though. Because there's only four wires that we need four to put in. Four wires. It's pretty simple cut and splice for this. Because um, it already has a shift kit module in it, this auto. The wiring shift kit module, it's already got the adjustable one and you can turn it off and on from Shift Kids Australia. Um, but this is better. So this is all it is, that's it. Just a magic black box. Just magic black box. What's in the box? What's in, What's the, in box the box today? today? I wasn't gonna finish that, but I had to. So it's pretty simple. That's the ECU, that's your harness. You've just got to spot, you just got to cut a few wires and terminate them. Um, from the harness, and there's a couple that you just got to join into. So effectively, we're cutting eight wires. We're cutting eight wires that go to the, AC, the ECU, and that's it. They're not going to the ECU anymore, because then they go through the module. And all this thing needs is power and ground. Um, so that's it, let's get into it. Cool. Big wires. So subwise, do you remember doing that? Yeah, long, long time long ago. Long time ago. Grouse, I'll just get sit in this luxurious seat and watch you work. Nah, mate, I'm not doing it at all. I put this thing in years ago. So there's the shift kit module. Uh, it works well, it's adjustable. So you've got your adjustment there for your firmness, and then you've got your on off. Awesome. How the frick did I get that out? Oh, there we go. Look at that. How easy is that? He's a piss, mate. That's just a big pot resistor. Damn, I need a freaking... Yeah, it is. That's what... People make them. You can make these kits. Can you? Yeah, you can make this. But, like, if you can buy something that's done nicely, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll take this out. There we go. Nice. Thanks, man. Simple as that. It's pretty easy, isn't it? It's a nice kit, this. I was so excited when I got it. Step one, remove this thing. <laughs> this thing, <laughs> it's not an instructional. We don't do instructionals, because generally we don't read the instructions anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't instruct you when we can't even follow other instructions. So, yeah. don't, instru so don't listen to our instructions. <laughs> and let's be honest, if you've been watching for a while, how many things have we got wrong? <laughs> God, I hate this door. It's comforting you. It's kind it's of like it's me. kind of like a hug, <laughs> <laughs> an unexpected hug. Yeah. Nathan always carries these around with him when he goes to car shows too, just to keep the door open. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to just cut the shifter thingy out? Now? Yeah, we'll get rid of that now. Okay. Ready? Yep. That's turning back now. Yep. Boom. Red what? Blue wire. Which one is it? Now I would be willing to bet that's constant power. That would that be, would be power. Because I've teed it in, haven't I? Yep, yep. So I'm gonna make this a little bit longer. Because we'll just tee into that. Be gone. So what we're gonna do before we go cutting, we're gonna actually locate all the wires that we need to connect up. We're gonna tape up which ones they are and what they're gonna go to on this. So this pink and green wire is gonna go to the brown wire on this module. We're going to do that now so that we have an idea to make sure that we're on the right track. Don't want to get halfway through the job and find out something's different. So we'll do that first and then we'll wire everything in after that. We're being smart for once rather than just going... <laughs> what you don't want to do is go cutting all the way through a wiring loom. <laughs> you can ask 12 old Dan about that. <laughs> so we're going to be here for a while. So we're just going to work our way through this and read these instructions carefully. So rather than you guys having to sit through this and watch all this, let's roll the time, mate. So we found which ones we need to tee into, or at least cut and then divert over to the control. Now we're going to take out the ones that we that don't get used anymore at all from the ECU. So this wire here is the start of them. So we cut. And then we're just going to uh, insulate either sides of these so they can't short or anything. 
and they don't get used anymore. So this is how I like to, hey, if I'm ever not using a wire and I want to insulate it so it doesn't touch anything, the way I like to do is get a nice bit of small shrink wrap. I put it on about halfway. Like that. Heat her up. And then I just like to get my pliers and just crimp her over like that. That way you won't touch anything and you can if you get pedantic, cut the end short so it won't touch anything. It's the way I like to do it. I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but I like it like that. So we've cut and isolated all the wires that we're not going to be using, so now we're up to the stage where we're going to wire this in. <laughs> Danger the intake manifold. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so first thing I know that needs to go. Red goes to red. <laughs> you put the red one to the red one. Big build today guys, big build. A lot of people may already know about these, especially because it was featured on the Skid Factory, that's where I got this idea from from Al. But I've since adopted it because they're freaking awesome and they make the job really easy. Generally. Rather than soldering it, what I do now, and again, I can't take credit for it, it was, I learned this from the skid factory. Get your two wires, sort of cross them over together like that. And then you get one of these things. Now, I don't know where you get them from other than eBay. And honestly, I'll need to find the link of how you actually, what they're actually called to get them. But they're just like a crimp on fitting. And then you get your crimpers. Like so. And do your crimp. And you do this to both sides as you would expect and bang the job is done and it just goes together nice and neat just like that and i freaking love it it's the, one of the best things i've ever uh, started to use when doing electricals on cars um just heaps easier than soldering doesn't dry out this you, you don't have to worry about getting a dry solder joint and you don't have to worry about the solder fatiguing and sometimes in those really hard to reach places where you just don't want to be soldering especially over carpet it just means you're not going to burn a hole through your lovely Fairlane carpet. Burn it all. One out of five. Yeah, I just really hate putting two wires together, like, because it's just a pain in the ass to hold the two wires yeah, and to I solder it. That's why I kind of like this, the way you're doing it. And, um, it's nice and easy, yeah. Because you don't have three hands to hold the soldering iron and to hold two wires that want to go in different directions. That's why I made my little tool up. You see my little tool? No. I'll show you. Very, very technical. Two clothesline pegs on the nail. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's gold. Hey, but it works. All it is, is two clotheslines. <laughs> you get a nice, uh, two clothesline pegs, get a nice thick nail, put that through the springs. Alright. And then when you're soldering, Clamp on there. Get your other clamp on here. I like how you've burnt. It's got burns. Yeah, look, they're a little, they're worn. They're worn, but they're inexpensive. When you need to replace it, you just get a new peg. Clamp on. Clamp on. <laughs> and then boom. Wow. And do you know what? A little modification I made a little while ago. Do you know why I cut that one short? Why? So you can put that in a vise. Oh, wow. And you can still clamp your clamp. <laughs> So there you go. Doesn't always have to be expensive tools. <laughs> Just don't let your mum know that you're stealing your pegs. <laughs> you can take the wood ones, but never take the plastic ones. The plastic <laughs> ones are no good because when you do burn, they just melt. The wood at oh, least. true, yeah. The wood the will wood's... just go black. Yeah, it just blackens a bit. You get that, that, uh, that weathered effect. Weathered effect? Weathered effect? Weather timber. Oh, I dropped my terminal. So do you drop terminals, do you? <laughs> don't even try. <laughs> Last one. Because I'm always the bad guy that drops everything else. He's on the bag. Yeah. <laughs> We're done, aren't we? We're done. So put the black cap back on. I probably wouldn't worry about it too much because we've got to pull it apart next week to put the Altec in, so... I know, but I just want to make it look neat. So then right. just stick that up into that hole? It's your job now, you know. Oh, okay. All that bit. Fine. So that's it. It's in. Um, I didn't tuck that up because, well, 
there's no room so we've got to figure out where to mount the Haltech anyway so <laughs> there's not much room so we're probably gonna to have to pull apart this side of the car yeah um so at the moment that'll do the all we need to do is just start the car go boom boom done and we're done for the day so yeah so how are we gonna get an engine light <laughs> oh. come on come on Well, that's a good start. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, it worked! <laughs> <laughs> it's so tempting to do a burnout. <laughs> Don't do a burnout! Oh, that's sick! <laughs> Let me jump in. So, so we're in drive. That's clearly trying to take off in fourth. Yeah. So for those of anyone that doesn't know exactly what the shift kit does, what it means is the gearbox will no longer be in auto. So you can't just put it in duh and let it the gearbox exactly figure itself right, out. Yeah. So now when Nathan wants to actually take off, he's got to start in first, which in the BM shifter for daily driving would be such a pain because <laughs> that's what you gotta do. Do not do a skid on my I, concrete. I'm sorry, I just spun the wheels. <sighs> it's too easy. Yeah, that's cool. So drive. So obviously neutral lockout for the new people. Reverse. And that's park. It's park. <laughs> Beautiful. Works. Nice. That was easy. Yeah. Well done. Good work, man. Now, uh, now that we've sort of skinned our knuckles on that, straight to a health tech. <laughs> We're basically wiring professionals now. <laughs> All right, it is a new day, and yeah. it's finally sunny enough to go. Uh, yeah, Nathan's willing to take his it's car. It's well enough to take it out. Uh, well enough. It's good enough to take it out. So there has to be certain conditions for Nathan to take out the fair lane. It has yeah. to be a sunny day above 23 degrees. Humidity has to be below 30%. Maybe, <laughs> because the sails will just take the car away. <laughs> We're just doing a quick little cruise just to see how the shifter actually feels. Yeah, because if... once the Haltech goes in it, we're not going to be able to drive it. Yeah. Until it gets tuned in that. So we want to make sure the shifter is right before we go put another computer in and we're not, we can't drive it. The tuner has to. Yeah. So... And we don't want to have issues in the dyno with the gearbox playing up because it's something we did. So we want to make sure that the shifter is sorted, all good, no yeah. dramas. So let's go do that now. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. Right. <laughs> that's a win. It's grumpy on cold. Let's go. All right. I'm not gonna punch it, he said. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Yeah, it feels good, man. It feels really good. Yeah. Cool. It's actually, uh, honestly, it's smoother. It feels better than before. It feels better than before. I feel I like this better than the adjustable shifter. That yeah. feels so much better. Yeah. Because the computer's controlling nothing. Yeah. So I I do what it wants to do. So that's third. Oh man. It takes I'm in love with that. And it doesn't feel like it's slipping either. Yeah. The only thing is when you stop, you gotta go through five gears I to know. put it in reverse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there is a downside to everything. Can't have everything. But this isn't your daily. If this was your daily, you wouldn't want this in your daily. Yeah. So we're gonna count that as a win because we reckon it worked really well. Yeah. Happy with it. Time to take her home and put a health Take her home and uh, cut the ECU in half. <laughs> Alright then. In, uh, in until the next, the next episode when we have a crack at. Why wiring a Haltech in? <laughs> wiring a Haltech? <laughs> it's a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> it is scary. We'll be right. We'll get there. See you in the next one. See you then. <laughs> I wonder if this is really boring for everybody else. It probably is. We haven't done anything stupid yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My antenna's unplugged.
That's probably why you haven't had a radio for I many know. years. That's why when I go to the drive-ins, I have to walk in and do the walk of shame and go to the guy and say, can I get a radio? Do you have to get a radio if you don't have a radio in your car? Well, how do you connect to the movie? Well, I'm, I don't know. I've got antennas in my car that work. <laughs> yeah, you gotta... Silly me, I'm the stupid one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the OG kebab chariot, kebab isn't chariot, it? Kebab chariot, it is. It's a little bit different from your typical VL, but it is a kebab chariot. <laughs> Because you got your kebab holder. You could fit a good solid six kebabs across that. Six? I'd go ten. Oh, uh, if you stack them this way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, I got. don't know how this is going to go going down the track, if it's going to fly off or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's downforce. That's what it is. That's just extra downforce. So that's kind of the thing that I'm interested to see. Like, do we have to... Um, do we? Should we take it off before we go down? No! 